Today we're going to be talking about what we often refer to as missions as a church. Now for a lot of people, uh, missions means a lot of different things. And when you're talking about what missions are important or not, it's almost like trying to describe which child you love most in your family. Now some of you can do that. You probably shouldn't, but you probably can. Uh, when we talk about missions as a, as a group of Christians, we bring with it a whole heap of other things. Uh, for some of us, missions only means doing work in other nations, um, proclaiming the gospel, or building infrastructure, or uh, missions for you, for some people, is a broad umbrella term that describes everything we do as the church. What we're going to be talking about this morning is, is more specific. We're going to be looking at the mission in terms of what we do as a local church, what we do to try to fulfill the mission of Christ that is given to us, that he has given his church. And to be particular, we're going to be looking at the specific mission of Christ that we believe is our mission. Now, Jesus talked about his mission for his people a lot. Right? He put it in parables. Uh, he gave long teachings about it. He even gave some really practical examples. He sent his apostles out two at a time out to go do missions, to go out into the community, into amongst their own people, and to represent Christ in those towns. So there's a lot you can turn to to talk about, well, what is the mission of Jesus Christ for his church? But I think one of the clearest, best examples that we're going to be looking at this morning is, again, found, we've already heard it once in, in the middle of worship, it's found at the end of the Gospel of Matthew. So if you want to go to the end of Matthew, Matthew 28, look at verse 18 to 20. And it's important for us to know where this is. It's important for us to be able to read it for ourselves. So here's what he says. Then Jesus came and told them, all right, said to them and said, this is to his disciples. He said, all, in, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all people baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Now, we could easily spend a month on this passage, break down each little part of it. And if that's something that sounds exciting to you, I encourage you to go to your life group this week and maybe use the life group questions we're going to be sending out tomorrow. Because it'll be all about this passage, breaking down the different elements of it. What does it mean? What are all these different concepts that we're reading about in this great commission? But for us this morning, I want us to hear and to focus on the six actions. All right? There are six actions found in this teaching. And they are they're listed for you here on the screen. They are going, discipling, baptizing, teaching, obeying, and joining. Right? Jesus says... As the church is going, it's in the process of going, as you go, we are to be discipling, we are to be, be teaching people about the things of Christ. We are to be baptizing, immersing, right? Baptism is a Greek word, baptizo. What does it mean? It means to immerse, it means to surround, it means to envelop. So we're to be helping people be surrounded by the things of Christ. We're to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We're to be teaching them. Teach them what? The weather? No. We're to be teaching them all the things that Christ has told us. And he said that he would give us his spirit and that would be the spirit of truth that would take those teachings that he has given us and he would give them to us at the right time in the right place in the way that we teach others so that we can help others obey the things of Christ. Not so that they can earn their way to salvation, but because they understand who Jesus is and they want to. To follow him. And lastly, he says that he has authority over all things and he will be with us through all of these actions. And we are to join with him. His spirit working in us, his people working in the name of Christ, the physical presence of Christ 
on earth until Jesus returns. And we are to join together with him, with each other, to accomplish this incredible mission. So that's the big idea. That's, is, that's the mission that Jesus Christ has given to his church. Now, two weeks ago, I'm not going to ask you if you remember what we talked about in church two weeks ago, because that's, that's impossible. But I'll tell you, two weeks ago, we talked about how if you are someone who calls on the name of Jesus Christ by faith, you believe in Jesus, you have trusted him as your Savior, but also as your Lord. You submit your life to his authority. You recognize that Jesus is your only hope of salvation. If that's who you are, you are included in the family of God. You are a child of the living God. You are a son or a daughter of the King, the Creator. And because you are a part of the family, that makes you a part of the body of Christ. Being a believer in Jesus is the same as being a part of the body of Christ. You cannot be a believer in Jesus and not be a part of the body of Christ. And if you want to be a part of the body of Christ, you can't be a part of the body of Christ unless you're a believer in Jesus. Right? That's a fact. Told to us over and over and over in Scripture. The reason I'm telling you that now is because if you are a believer in Jesus, if you want to stand in the place with Jesus, being a, an heir, a co-heir with Christ for all of eternity, receiving the kingdom as the Son of God receives the kingdom, if that's what you want, if that's the promise you're claiming by faith, then here's the deal. You have a mission it's been given to you by Christ. It is for his church. And that mission is these six actions. As a church, it's what we're about. As people, it's what we're about. These six actions are what the church has been called to do globally throughout time. Now, if you know anything about Christian history and tradition, you know we kind of got lost a few times along the way. We've lost sight of how simple this mission is. And how compelling this mission is. And you don't really need to add a lot to it. There's not much more that you need other than these six actions about going and discipling and baptizing, teaching, obeying, and joining with Christ. That's enough. Right? That's an awesome mission if you break it down and start living it out. And that's what we are about as a local church. In reality, that's why you come here now, in this moment. is so that we can be the church fulfilling this great vision that Jesus Christ has given to us. That's what we do in our ministries as a church. I'll give you an example of what this looks like. What does it look like for us to be on mission with Christ, doing the mission of, of Jesus Christ as a local church? You know, we, were, we had the opportunity a couple weeks ago to take the most kids we've ever taken to kids camp, right, two weeks ago. It was just two weeks ago. If you were at kids camp and it was only two weeks ago, can you believe that? And you guys did an awesome job. You went out and you did, you performed, you fulfilled this great commission calling amongst these kids. I want to personally thank Kylie, Bethany, Cassidy, Josie, and then the cooks, Pauline and Anne and Amy. Uh, they, they did so much work. And so many of you that went as leaders, you invested time, you took time off of work, you lost a lot of sleep. A lot of sleep. Uh, if you were there, you know what I'm talking about, right? And it was rainy and it was cold. But did you see the rain and the cold in that video? Did you see it slowing down the ministry that, that your church was doing amongst those kids? No, of course not. Because a great commission isn't stopped by a little rain, right? The mission of Christ continues. You guys did an awesome job, and I'm proud of it. I love what you've accomplished. That is who we are. So our family's ministry, right, it is, it is about these six actions, right, these six things taken out of this mission. Uh, what we do in our church service, what we do in our small groups, what we do throughout the week with, when you're looking at you know, toddler jam or the play group or any of the Bible studies that take place or the prayer times that happen, all of the stuff that we do as a church is driven to accomplish this mission given by Christ. I'll give you another example that happened just last week, right, here's a picture. This is from state youth games last week. Took the most young adults to state youth games as a church we've ever done, ever. Huge amount of people. You see those two champions up there in the corner? That's Derek Coe and Ashley Gallagher. Big thanks to those guys. Huge thanks. They organized this entire thing. And what's it, what are they holding? 
I, I think that's a first place trophy for state youth games. Just saying. Not bad, not bad. Uh, not that that's what it's about, but uh, it is, it's, if, if there's going to be a competition, we should win. But uh, one of the things I love about Derek and Ashley, and they, they are embodying this mission that we're talking about, because this is what they faced, right? They took this huge amount of young adults to an event that was essentially a big sports weekend, right? A bunch of people playing sports and competing with each other. And the organizers of state youth games, for whatever reason that I can't fathom, have this year decided to drop all the Christian content out of the weekend. I don't understand that. Um, I'm sure it has something to do with COVID, right? Everything does. I, I'm not going to second guess that. But Derek and Ashley said, not on our watch. Not on our watch. And they built a team of people to go down and to lead our kids in an opportunity to worship and to, to gather around the word. And they, they created this environment. They joined together. They had some people to help. They had Christine and Daryl Stout. Ivan and Anna Arthur went down. Mel Gray, who was singing up here this morning, and Michaela Lonsdale went down and led all of these guys in worship. And they led them in a time where they, they listened to Ivan giving them a message out of the Bible. And, you know, yeah, they were all tired. Yes, I'm sure if you were there, you don't remember much of what happened. But it was the principle, right? Our DNA as the people of Christ is we are on mission all the time. And we don't miss an opportunity. Just because it might look insensitive or it might seem too difficult, you know what? We suck it up and we do it. Why? Because it's what, we are, it's what we live for. It's who we are. I'm proud of these people. I'm proud of them for, for taking the bull by the horns, right? For doing it themselves and saying, we're going to make this happen. If no one is going to lead us, we're going to do it. I want to I talk to you next about another part of this Great Commission and to to do that, I want you to hear it again. So we're going to read back through this text again. So this is Matthew again, Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all people, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Now, I want you to hear in this a bit of a, yeah, it's a Greek word. I want you to understand something out of this teaching that I think is significant for us. Uh, when we talk about the, the who, who are you called to go to, you probably, in your Bibles, you're probably used to hearing it in terms of going to all the nations or discipling all the nations. And I want to pause there because the, the Bible nerd in me wants to get things right. I like good translation. And when I see it is... Uh, caught up in tradition and maybe needs to be shifted so that you understand what it's actually saying, I want, to, I want to point these things out to you. The term nations, why do we talk about it in terms of discipling the nations? And the answer for that is because in 1611, right, A.D. 1611, when the King James Bible was being translated, the King James Bible being the most prolific English translation of the Bible that's ever been created, in more circulation than any other book in the world. The King James, in 1611, used a new term, nation. National identity was brand new in the 15th and 16th century in Europe. They were starting to develop the city-state concept. They were moving into what is called a national identity, something that we totally understand today, which is where people were starting to identify by the nation not by their ethnicity, all right? And that's a, that's a shift in the way that people think about themselves. And it's something that we have embraced and we totally understand and we're, we're all into it. But that's not exactly what Jesus was talking about, right? Yes, it was a great cutting edge. Believe it or not, the, the King James Bible was cutting edge. When it came out, the English that it used was, was right into the times. It was current for the moment. And so talking about discipling the nations was a brand new European idea. But if we back up a little bit and go back to the time of Jesus, what was Jesus saying? That seems more important to me in a translation. See, Jesus is using this, this word, and we hear it in Matthew as ethnos. 
Ethnos is a Greek term, is used in the New Testament and translated a lot to refer to anyone who is not ethnically Jewish, otherwise known as a Gentile. Okay, so maybe you've heard that term before. So what Jesus is saying when he's calling us out to go take this mission is he's not saying, go out, get a map, and figure out where all the boundaries are and put a missionary in each of those countries. That's not the Great Commission. The Great Commission is go into all the world that is filled with all kinds of people. People that are not like you. All right? Jesus was giving this commission to a bunch of Jewish believers. And he was telling them, go out to the people that aren't exactly like you. And take with them these six actions, these, these big ideas. Take with them these, these missions. Right? Go out there and be the people that are going and discipling and baptizing and teaching and obeying and joining. Do that work. And so when the church began to be separated, okay, so they were all gathered up in Jerusalem, and at the first martyrdom of Stephen, he was put to death because of his faith, the church scattered out into the world, and they took these six actions with him. They took this mission of Christ with them as they returned to the places they had come from, to their homelands before they gathered in Jerusalem to become the church. So they went out and they carried Christ with them. Why is this important? Because often when we think about what is the mission, what, are, what is missions, what does it mean to be involved in missions, we have this idea that it must involve that real missions is going to foreign lands. And then if you're not going out into another nation, you're not fulfilling the Great Commission. Well, that's not what Jesus said. That's not what he was meaning. He was telling you, go to the other people. Well, who are the other people? Well, who's my neighbor? Right? Jesus tried to answer that for us over and over and over. Go to the other and bring with them Jesus. Right? Bring the other. Whoever the other is in your life, take them Jesus. That's the Great Commission. That is the mission of the church. And Jesus goes on then to expand on this concept. So as he is the resurrected Christ gathered before his church, before his ascension and glorification in Acts 1.8, we hear Jesus expand on this idea. He says this, he says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth, to the others. So Jesus was calling his people to take this mission of his out with them as they traveled out, as they encountered this persecution that caused them to spread across the globe, to take this mission and to get involved wherever they landed. Now the idea was that if you were from, let's say you're from Galatia, right? You remember the, the letter of Galatians from a, a district, not Jerusalem, not part of that world. If you were from there, had traveled to Jerusalem, you heard Peter talking about Jesus in the day of Pentecost. You became a Christian. You got baptized because that's what, that's what you do when you're a believer in Jesus. You follow the obedience and the calling of Christ. And you were a part of the church and you were happy to stay there, but you don't belong there. You're not from there. Your people are over there. Then the time of Persecution comes, and now you're part of the diaspora, the church spread around the world, and you go back home, back where you're from, and you take Jesus and the mission of Jesus to the others, to the people around you. So I want to talk to you guys, to us, about what are we doing in mission locally? Let's look at our, our understanding of local missions. So here, we're talking about something different than what we do right now, what we do for each other, the way that we lift each other up, encourage each other, teach each other, the way that we worship as a group. When we talk about local mission, what we're talking about is investing in other communities of faith, other churches around us, lifting up the people of Jesus in other places so that they will be, be able to complete the mission of Christ themselves, to, to create capacity in church leaders and churches and people around us so that they can be lifted up. We love doing this as a church. It's part of our DNA. We love to come up with great ideas that are good for us, that we want to do, and then we try our best to invite others to join us in that. And we try to, to 
export our ideas to other churches. You know, for seven years, I was the chairman of the Churches of Christ in WA. Why? Because I enjoyed it? No. But because it was a part of our church mission to invest in other churches. And we're still active in that. You know, in just a little while ago on Anzac Weekend, we ran the Young Adult Collective. Uh, I don't know if you remember that. It was an awesome, awesome thing. We, we, had, we took so many of our young adults. We had about uh, 90-something young adults go down to this camp, and we, sp- we just invested in them like crazy over that long weekend. And our vision in that was to invite other churches to bring their leaders and their students with them to come down to the Baptist campsites and to fill it up. But we didn't get there. Now, we had about six churches that were represented. Uh, some of them, very, you know, maybe one or two people came along. You know, it wasn't a failure, but it was the first go. Right? It was the first try. And people around us, I don't know if you know this or not about Christians, they're weird when it comes to change. You know, people can be real slow to accept new things in the church. And so the idea of cooperating with other churches is weird in a lot of churches. So cool, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep trying. We're going to push ahead. Uh, in August of this year, so in just, just a month or two, we're going to have the Beyond Conference. This is our fourth time to run the Beyond Conference as a church. And this whole concept, this whole conference is all about investing in other churches. Yes, the information that's given is good for us. It's good for our people and our leaders and our, our people that want to grow their capacity and how they minister wherever they go. But it's really about reaching out into the churches around us across the state and investing in those who work in, with, with kids, youth, and young adults, growing their capacity so that they can be better at completing the mission of Christ in their community. That's why we do it. It's part of our mission. This year we're bringing over this lady named Kimberly Smith. Uh, she's coming from over east, you know, assuming COVID and all the other stuff. Uh, She's coming over to bring with her some great new ideas, some stuff that has been working for them in their context to help us expand our capacity. And we want to invite lots and lots of other churches to join us in this process. One of our big goals here is to reach out, not just to have great content, but also to reach out to other churches and invite them to come and be a part of this. Why is it called the Beyond Conference? It's called beyond because we we see this. We see it clearly. Our job, our mission is to help other church leaders go beyond their current capacity in fulfilling the mission of Christ to the next generation. That is really good. Someone should write that down. All right, well, that's our new tagline. I need to go back and watch that and we'll write it down. All right, it's about helping them go beyond where they are now so that they're able to fulfill this mission of, of, that Christ has given us, these six actions, with kids, youth, and young adults across the state. It leads me to the next thing we're going to talk about, which is one of our core values in missions as a church. One of our core values is that of participation. Uh, we don't like, well, let's not say it that way. Let me try it another way. We prefer uh, to be involved with missions and mission partners that allow us to be a part of the mission. We'd prefer to do that rather than just write checks and send them out to people. And there's a reason for that. It's because we have seen over and over in the life of our church, one of the core parts of our church, one of the DNA that has made this church a great church, is because our people over the years have had multiple opportunities to gather together in teams and in groups and to go out and to serve, to be in mission together out away from this community. And when they go, your teams grow and mature. We are the ones blessed by being able to send out people into mission. Yes, the people that are receiving some of the things that we do in their environments and that local church that we're serving or that place across uh, the ocean, whatever it is, yes, they get something out of it. But the reality is we do it because it makes us a healthier and more mature church. The more of you that get your hands dirty in serving other people in the name of Jesus, the better we are as a church. So we recognize that. We believe in participation. So that leads me to something that I want to talk to you about that is a bit different. 
I want, to, I want to paint for you a vision of missions that I believe is going to change the future of our church in a lot of ways. Today's one of those days that I hope to be able to put on my calendar and say this was a historic moment in the life of our church. Now that's a big buildup for what I'm about to tell you. So let me tell you this, this mission vision that I've got and I hope that you accept and that we grow in as a church I'll get right into it, right? Our state, this state, is filled with beautiful, beautiful people who love the Lord, who are living in, in regional communities, all out away from this, the big city, away from the suburbs, away from the popular areas. And these people are doing it tough. The communities are doing it tough. The churches are doing it tough. And in a lot of these cases, the churches are closing and disappearing. As I said, I was a part of the Churches of Christ uh, executive team. I was, part of the, I was the chairman of the board for a number of years, and I witnessed and watched as we lamented and wring our hands about the way that the regional churches are dying. And we stood back, and we prayed about it, and we shed a tear, and we moved on. And I know now, after having spent some time on this and thinking and praying and looking deep into what is it that we need to do, I know for sure that if the people of Jesus Christ in WA, if we don't take our mission seriously, what we're going to see is we're going to see the end of the functioning church in regional Australia. Within 15 years, maybe less than that, maybe 10, maybe 7 years, We'll have half as many existing churches in our regional towns and communities, and I bet within 20 you'll have maybe a third. What's happening in the regions in terms of faith is that the churches are struggling, and they're not being supported. There's not any leadership out there encouraging them. I know this. For eight years, I've been trying to generate people, to generate excitement around the idea of getting city churches and suburban churches that are blessed to be able to take some of our mission money, the things that we all happily give away to all these kinds of groups all over the place, and to see that our state needs missions. We need to be spending our time and our energy and our money reaching the people that are in our regional communities. They are crying out for help. They need help. You know, they are the other in our mission. You know, and with COVID, it has been a great blessing because it's helped us to start looking for where can we do missions? Where can we participate in missions together as a church? And it's opened my eyes, it's opened other people's eyes to say, you know what? We're missing out on the fact that right in front of us, is a mission field that we are ignoring because we're too interested in traveling to Bali. We're too interested in traveling to overseas places that we've never been before so we can eat new foods and have new experiences, not do missions. And right in front of us, the towns, the regions are crying out. I believe, and this is part of the vision statement here, I believe with all of my heart, I believe that people from our church, this church, some of you maybe, will be called by Christ as missionaries to regional communities. You will hear the call of Christ to go into these regional towns, to go into these places, and to preach the gospel and to help build up the local church. Not because you love the regional lifestyle, not because you love the name of the town that you can't even pronounce, but because Jesus Christ is going to be calling missionaries into this mission field. No one else is going to lead us into this. I've looked. There is no leadership to be found in our state. It doesn't exist. The church in WA has failed. And so we're going to pick it up. In whatever way we can, we're going to pick it up and we're going to work with it. We are, we are burdened with this mission as a church. And it's going to stay with us. Let me tell you a little bit about what I think it might look like at the beginning. All right, So it's very simple. What do we want to accomplish? 
For starters, it's really simple. We want Warmer Community Church to connect with maybe one or two regional churches or communities that need a church. And we're going to start spending our mission resources there. And we're going to start sending our teams there. And we're going to start leading ministry. And we're going to start lifting up the capacity of the Christian leaders that live in these communities so that they can fulfill the mission of Christ in that town that you've probably never heard of and never been to. But we're going to get started. We may not get it all done, not in my lifetime, but you know what? We're going to get one done. We're going to make that relationship work with at least one church. And we're going to become a great friend to that church. And we're going to try to solve whatever we can solve. We're going to encourage what we can encourage. And we're going to lift up those who want to be lifted up. We want to see the church flourish. People be saved. Jesus be glorified in the regions in WA. That's the vision. So what we do next in that process, right? It's huge. That's a big thing. Let's pare it down to something we can do. Next big step for us is we want to join together our local and our state mission. All right, our local mission coming up in August is the Beyond Conference, right? That's investing in the leadership capacity of people and churches, lifting them up. And we want to connect with the people in those regional churches that are willing to come. And we want as many of them to come to the conference as possible. That's a great place for us to start this process and to start building those relationships with those church leaders to try to find out, well, what is it they need? What can we help with? We don't want to presume that we know what they need. We want to hear from them. It's a great opportunity for us to draw them together, to bless them. So to make that dream into a reality, we need to make contact with these regional churches. Right? We need to start calling them up. And we need to find out what it is that's stopping them from being able to send their leaders to the Beyond Conference at our church in August. And if it's money, if it's the cost of the conference, we're going to do our best to cover those costs. If they need a place to stay, I'm going to ask you guys to open your homes and take in these church leaders and to put them up for a weekend. We can all participate in this mission somehow, in some way. We can be a part of what is asked of us to get started. Just so that you're aware, okay, we've, we've made it easy. Given you a form. How do you get involved in missions? You grab one of these. All right, they're above, the, they're on the boxes in the back. They're outside, they're at the info desk. And what does it say on here? It's just, I want to help out with the mission in August that is the Beyond Conference, connecting with our regional partners. Here's some ways you can help with that. Think about it, pray about it. Don't pick a box unless you're ready to commit to it. All right? We're, we don't want to see everybody put their hands up. We want to see the ones that are called put their hands up. It is about all of us being a part of the mission, but this next step needs to be for those who are ready to commit to it who see the vision of Christ and are ready to reach out into the churches around us that are struggling and to lift them up. If that's you, fill out the form, drop it in the box, give it to Kyla, give it to me, give it to the info desk people. We'll take it, we'll help you. Every one of us is a part of missions if you're a part of our church. And the way that we are a part of missions, I want to tell you how we give money to missions as a church. We take 10% of every dollar that you give to support the ministry of our church, we take a tithe, we take 10% off the top before we pay any bills, before we pay staff, before we do anything else, and we set aside 10% of our income as a church from you, and we give that away into mission. We want to lead by example. You know how much more we could do locally if we didn't spend that 10%? We would actually do less. We would actually perform worse as a church if we were not involved with the giving away of God's resources into the community. We are blessed by being a part of what God is doing all around us. And I hope that you join us in that. The way that we can get better at missions, the way we become more generous in missions is for you to be generous in your giving to the work of this church. It's as simple as, it, uh, as I can say. It. That's how we want that's healthy growth, and that's healthy missions as it comes out of the life of the local church. 
Now, that was a big statement that I've just given you, right? That's a big vision. And for you, you might think, well, it's pretty simple. We just want to have some friends out in the regions and we lift them up. It's a little bit tougher than it looks. Uh, but I know that with, if this is from God, if this is God's vision for our church, he will bless it and he will lead us. And we're going to see good things come from it. The last thing I want to talk to you about missions is what we are doing with international missions at the moment. Uh, so for the last, well, the last 10 years that I'm aware of, it probably goes beyond that, but the last 10 years, we've been partnered with Partners Against Poverty, uh, doing all sorts of good stuff out in other areas that are international to us. Specifically, in the last six or seven years, we've been focusing in the Takeo region outside of Phnom Penh in Cambodia, working with a couple, a missionary couple there, who gave up their lives completely that they had in the Philippines, moved their whole family to a very poor, very regional, very difficult part of Cambodia, so that they could be used by God to lift up local leaders in the local church, to help those who are leading the church. That's exactly the kind of work we want to be a part of. And we love Jose and Rowena and what they have been a part of. And so I asked them in preparation for today to make a video and to send it to us. And they've done that. And I asked them to send us a video that wasn't just about like, show us the crickets that you grow or show us the school, the facilities. Don't, don't just give us a tour of the place. Tell us how you're doing. Because we need to see that God calls real living people into missions. People like you and me. People that are willing to go. And it, it comes with a cost. I want to prepare you for what they've sent to us because it is not what I expected. Uh, the reason I'm preparing you is because it, it, it hurt when I watched it. Okay? I'm warning you. Some of the stuff that they're going to share with you is going to be painful. It's going to be challenging. But it's 100% real. And I believe it's exactly, exactly what we need to understand. When we talk about what is our mission, who are we supporting, what are we about as a church, Jose and Rowena are about to take us to school. All right, let's, let's listen and we'll meet back together in a second. Blessings to all the brethren at Warnborough Community Church. If we may pick one good thing that this pandemic has brought about in our life, it is the deep realization and appreciation of God's grace and mercy moving freely through the prayers and tangible support of His people. When my mom, who had been staying with us in Cambodia, had been diagnosed of having stage 4 colon cancer in March 2020, I and our son Samuel were already in the Philippines in preparation for his senior high school equivalency exams. When I heard the news about mom's diagnosis, I had to fly back to Cambodia and prepare to transport her back to the Philippines for further care and treatment. But because of her fragile situation, we had to bring along with us Rachel, our daughter, in order for her to assist for whatever needs that her grandma uh, may have all along the, the travel time back to the Philippines. Just a couple of days upon arriving at our home province now, my mom's situation further deteriorated that we had to admit her to the hospital. And since we just arrived from abroad, we had to be admitted as patients under observation and had to be put in the COVID isolation ward. Just a couple of days after that though, our son Samuel had developed cough and fever that was uh, very hard to control already at home. And because of that, the monitoring nurse in our, in our village recommended that he too will be hospitalized. And so since nobody is allowed to stay with, with him as well in the, in the hospital, but uh, just among us, it was Rachel who had to accompany him in his hospital room. Actually, the four of us were among the first occupants of the COVID isolation ward in our provincial hospital. And the, the, the ordeal that we went through during those times, of course, 
uh, it's just hard to, to narrate that further. But as many of you may have already uh, known, we eventually had to say goodbye to my mom uh, by the January of 2021. At a time that I actually have returned back already in, in Cambodia, and it was very hard for me already to go back uh, to the Philippines to attend to her last moments. But in all of this, again, we could see that the Lord's hand had been moving in response to the prayers of many. Because not only in our ordeal in the Philippines, but even with Rowena's situation here in Cambodia, having been left alone, we could see the hand of God just moving. Being left alone here in Cambodia wasn't easy at all. The longest time I was separated from my family in the past was just about three weeks. But as it turned out, this period of separation was stretched to almost a year. And with all its uncertainties, and especially the challenge of my chronic respiratory health problem, making me a potential high-risk patient as far as COVID infection was concerned. I actually had to seek professional help here in Cambodia as I was already having bouts of depression and anxiety attacks. In spite of all this, we feel the hand of God comforting and renewing us, giving us a fresh dose of strength to move forward. While our children are left in the Philippines for the continued education, Sam being in the senior high and Rachel working on her master's program, Rowena and I are back here at KYDC, continuing the ministry we left for, our, for the students as well as the, the churches in the surrounding communities. During this time of pandemic, we have helped raise awareness and distribute the health kits all throughout the Samrang district. And uh, at the moment, we are also focusing on building the capacity of our staff and doing our best to contribute to preparing our, our communities uh, for the potential uh, problem of uh, food shortages as a result of this uh, pandemic. So in, in, in all of this, actually, we are seeing all the more the need for prayer partners, the need for intercessors who will just back us up, knowing that the the challenge and the, the battle that we are facing right now is far from over. But uh, with the Lord, uh, our God uh, in our midst, and uh, uh, our, our partners uh, backing us up uh, all the way, uh, we believe that uh, Cambodia's uh, uh, future and uh, what God has uh, laid in store for the ministry that uh, uh, you all have been a part of uh, here will just uh, continue to complete the task that God has uh, a portion for all of us to accomplish. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your prayers and support. There's not much I'm going to add to Jose and Rowena. I just ask you to join me in prayer for them if we could. Heavenly Father, we recognize your servants. We see them. Lord, we thank you for them. Lord, we recognize that the calling that you've put into our lives, each of us requires sacrifice. That worship costs. Lord, what you have given us cost you everything. Lord, what you have called us to costs us all that we are. Lord, we thank you for people like Jose and Rowena who set the example, who lead by example. Lord, thank you for their honesty and their vulnerability today. Lord, for us to see that, that you use broken people, that you use people who are struggling to accomplish things that they can't even imagine. Lord, their struggle and their suffering is real. But from our perspective, Lord, it gives us the opportunity to give you praise. 
We thank you for the way that you've supported them and lifted them up. We thank you that we are able to be able to be a part of that. God, that you have blessed our church community to the point where we are able to support theirs. To help them through this tough time, Lord, so that they will be a blessing to all those churches that lean on them for support and leadership. Lord, we pray blessing over Jose and Rowena and their family. God, that you would give them strength in knowing that they are not alone. Not only are you walking with them and their friends around them are walking with them, but so is our church. That we are joining them. Lord Jesus, I ask that you would send us out, your church today, on your mission. Lord, that we would say yes to what you have placed in front of us. Though it cost us more than we are willing to pay, we say yes. And we thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hope you guys have a great mission-filled week. And uh, don't forget, if you want to be a part of what's going to happen with the regional churches and our local thing, you can grab that at the back, drop it in the box. God bless you. See you soon.